Yo, what up? This your boy Ken of Stones, aka Coffee Weeston. This your boy DOE, Good Rebel Bowl. And we are the Dirty Hills. You already know, man, you tuning in to 1130 Podcast. Mm -hmm. Not 730, but 1130. Dude, dude, that's my job. Not 730, but 1130. Yeah. And you have been <laughs> Dirty Hills Approved. Yo, what it do, everybody? It's your man, Dre, a.k.a. Dre on Wheels. This is episode 68 of the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling. What's good, y'all? Everybody doing out there? Appreciate you guys joining me back here on the podcast for a new edition of Talk Pro Wrestling, you guys. Good morning, good night, good afternoon to all my listeners all across the world, wherever you may be. Appreciate you guys joining me. Uh, me back here for Talk Pro Wrestling, you guys. Man, it's going to be a great show. You know how we get down, you guys. If you're listening to me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts is at, make sure you subscribe. And if you're watching on YouTube, head over. And if you're new to the 1130 Podcast, head over to YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, like, leave a comment. Do all that great stuff. And don't forget to follow the 1130 Podcast on all social media platforms. But you guys, man, know I'm back at it on this Friday with a great episode, you guys. Man, I'm not alone. I got my guy, you guys. He's back here on Talk Pro Wrestling, you guys. Yes, Warren, Mo- Warren Marlowe, you guys, a.k.a. the American Prodigy, you guys. Coming to us from Jacksonville, Florida, you guys. He's the host of Buzzing with Marlowe. He's going to be joining me back here on the podcast, chopping it up, having some fun, you guys guys we ain't gonna waste no time we're gonna get into it you guys like i said i'm excited warren how's it going bro hey dre what's up boy hey, i mean it's it's been some time it's, yeah. it's time to have some fun today man yeah it's been a couple of weeks man it's been a couple of weeks how everything been since then uh good man um now sounding better and stuff i mean i had went under the weather with covid and stuff so it's it's just good to actually be well again because that was rough. <laughs> wow, how, how was the process with that? Is everything going good with that? Oh yeah, I mean it was just I was just constantly laying around, and I I've never really have ever been that fatigued. Like it was actually the point where I was not even able to lift my own laundry. Like, I was out of breath lifting clothes, so it was rough. <laughs> oh, wow, man. wow, yeah, man. I hear a lot. You know, a lot of people. You know who. Uh, Come, come down with uh, you know uh, COVID and stuff like that. Have a real hard time, man. But I'm I'm proud to hear you're doing well, man. You're doing better. You're here on Talk Pro Wrestling with me. How's your day going, though? I see you drinking a whole lot of water, man. <laughs> hey, staying hydrated and uh, we about to have a nice little kicker. Oh, okay, okay. So. Okay. Let's get it, man. I'm okay, ready. Man. Let's get it, man. We're going to get into everything you guys here on Talk Pro Wrestling. It's been a wild week. It actually been a long week, you guys, for real. Um, last week uh, here on the podcast, uh, last Friday, we uh, kicked off uh, Rampage in the United Center, you guys. It was a huge event. We had that uh, Friday night. And, of course, SummerSlam uh, this past weekend with NXT TakeOver 36 to cap it off. You know, also uh, Raw and NXT and other events but uh we're gonna start it off with the elephant in the room you guys cm punk made his huge return to pro wrestling a lot of people were chatting about it some people were excited everybody got mixed feelings on it marlo uh what you think what you think about it it was long overdue and the biggest thing i got with this i've seen it numerous times and this is how you know you're a true wrestling fan you didn't just watch it once you had to go and rewatch it constantly just to see that reaction. Because I remember six years ago, literally everybody's pick, Royal Rumble, everyone's going to come back one time. CM Punk was going to be there. CM Punk, CM Punk every year. So it was just like constantly you just kept seeing it not happening. And then when the AEW show came on, I think it was all out, the first one, and where CM Punk did the meet and greet or the talk thing and stuff. You kind of saw the thing was like, maybe he's not going to AEW. Maybe he's, mm-hmm. he's done with wrestling. Maybe he is fully done with wrestling. And then when he came back to WWE, he backstage thing. I think maybe after that got let go, maybe that's what made his decision. But it's long overdue. But I, I love the pop. The pop was good. But my thing is, man, they should not have said a thing about it. Just let it happen. Yeah. 
Yeah. Just let it happen. If, mm -hmm. if you would literally let that happen, that pop would have probably even been stronger. Because I, because mm -hmm. rumors was he was already in the building. Before mm -hmm. anything was going on, he was already in the building. Because mm -hmm. apparently he did like a, a podcast with Ren Renee that night or that day or something. Oh, okay. So he was already in the building. So, I mean, it was just a matter of if he was going to show up. Yeah. Man, if they would have let that happen, though, I mean, but, you know, these days, you know, like we were talking last time about social media and fans, man, you know, with everything, you know, they follow CM Punk and CM Punk posting this and uh, he's at the United Center and uh, he said something about Michael Joy and, and they call it the the, the first dance. I didn't know why they was calling it. I was so clueless. You know, I'm really mm -hmm. not on Twitter like that. So I'm like, you know, <laughs> hey, but I mean, everybody kind of like was pushing for it and was saying, you know, so. Hey, you know, it, it was beautiful. And like you say, I did not it watch was. it. I did not watch it one time. I watched it at least a couple more times for real. I had to mm -hmm. say, hey, come and watch this little real, quick, real quick. Like, look at this. Like, it was just amazing. Like, the pop was real. And, you know, him just coming out there and just saying everything he said was amazing, though. I thought it was really amazing, though. You know, everybody kind of like went on the fan who was uh who was crying. You know, I think that was all of us. You know, if our favorite superstar came back, that's all of us. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I remember I remember on the last podcast you did, you were talking about when The Rock came back in uh, 2011. Yes. yes. I cried. Yes. Like, I, I, I never thought we'd see him back in the mm -hmm. ring. Never thought we'd see him back. And then calling out John Cena. Like, it just was, oh, my gosh, it's finally happening. This mm -hmm. is the moment. Mm -hmm. Now, with Punk, I mean, it's, it's just been long overdue. I mean, I think – him being 41 years old now, and I think he's now realized it's like, look, my MMA career is done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. What do I need to do? Like, did, it, did the MMA career tarnish his name? I don't know. I mean, honestly, I, he took a chance at it and did – I mean, he did pretty well. I mean, regardless of win or loss, he made a – heck of amount of money so mm -hmm. obviously money is not a big issue with him but the question is in wrestling now is can he still go mm -hmm. i remember when when i everybody keeps asking me about my time hey do you think you could ever go back my question is as always can i still go to that level i used to be back in the when i was wrestling that's mm -hmm. the question we got with punk and mm -hmm. what kind of punk we're getting are we getting the cm punk that is trying to steal all the spotlight and put it back on himself, or we're we getting the humble CM Punk that's really trying to make a statement and make appreciation for wrestling. Mm -hmm. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good thought. I like that. I really do. You know, what type of punk are we gonna get? You know, we don't know. And can he still go? You know, uh, I guess Darby Allen would be his first test. You know, at All Out. But man, you mentioned this <laughs> MMA career, man. That didn't really go too well. For him, you know, he did make a whole lot of a hell of a lot of money, but I don't think he wanted to end it right there. You know, of course, throughout everywhere, every wrestling, especially WWE, and you know, now with every mm -hmm. AEW, especially before he came back, chatting CM Punk, CM Punk. So it was, it was just there. It was right, Chicago. Yeah. So you know, now this is see, you know, where he can go at. You know, how far? You know, what are he gonna do? Darby Allen seems like the first person that he can work with, and. It seems to be cool, though. Like you said, it's way long overdue, but mm -hmm. I'm excited for it. I'm really, really excited for it, though. Um, okay. Well, we had that on last week, uh, you guys. CM Punk returning to AEW, and uh, which was an awesome uh, rampage. You know, the fact that they come on at 10 p.m., uh, at Especially here on the East Coast, so it's kind of like, you know. <laughs> but, hey, they, they had a lot Still of Still daylight. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So, man. But uh, last week, you guys, also, we had SummerSlam on Saturday night. It was real, real weird that it was on a Saturday night this year. But nonetheless, though, uh, how was your SummerSlam? Or did you, you know, did you watch it and did you enjoy it? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I said, I literally said it. After that punk came back, WWE is going to step up. Mm -hmm. And I flat out said their matches are going to be what we want, what we want to see. Now, do we want to see every single guy we pick to win or lose? No, that's not wrestling. Wrestling is an ongoing sport that literally is telling a story between a baby face and a heel. There's no such thing as, oh, my gosh, we need the baby face to always win or the heel to always win. 
It's based off of just the story. I never really care about what's the decision on the winning part. I want to see what the match part is. I want to see how the crowd gets involved, how how everyone just stays in tune. But I liked it. I mean, there were some little mishaps on some things, but I liked it. It was a really good pay-per-view. Okay, okay. It was cool, though. I liked it, uh, you know, the aspect of it. Um, you know, the real huge crowd, the SummerSlam. And, you know, they haven't had SummerSlam or, you know, any other pay-per-view besides WrestleMania in a huge stadium like that in a while. So that was pretty cool, you know. But uh, SummerSlam all together, man, like I said, it was awesome. Uh, like you mentioned, it was, you know, of course, some people that we may have wanted to win did not win, though. Um, what, what match we might you? upset some people in that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people were very upset, man. A lot of people were very upset. Um, we're going to talk about it off the bucks. Uh, Bianca Belair, mm-hmm. uh, was, she lost her SmackDown Women's Championship so- in 26 seconds to the returning, the man, Becky Lynch, though. Um. What was your thoughts? What was your reaction? Oh, okay. I want to cool. know. Okay, cool. I want to know your reaction <laughs> first. Okay, I right, want you yeah. to know your reaction first, and then, okay, like I said, we might upset some people in this yeah, one because yeah. I I've seen a numerous things about it, so I want to clear that out today. Okay, okay, cool. Um, first of all, when the match was happening, you know, of course Bianca came out there and uh, Carmella came out. That threw me off. I was like, how many times we're gonna see Bianca versus Carmella? And what happened with Sasha Banks? You know, mm-hmm. um, I'm assuming, you know, maybe, I, like, I don't know. But I'm just saying, what happened with Sasha Banks? Then uh, out comes Becky Lynch, which I thought she was going to get involved in the Raw Championship match, or at least come out afterwards, whoever win that, you know. Would, mm-hmm. But we get Becky, and Becky comes out. Becky versus Bianca, cool. But I was not really too excited with her winning in 26 seconds. That really reminded me of when The Rock, and I love The Rock, so, I mean, it's cool. But when The Rock uh, defeated Eric Rowan at WrestleMania 32, and, like, what, I don't know how many, 10 seconds, I don't even know how long it was, but it reminded me of that. But, you know. It was actually four seconds. <laughs> okay, four seconds, four seconds. But it was it was not, I don't think it was not the way uh for for it to go but obviously is maybe it's a story behind it you know but you know she wins the royal rumble she goes on the wrestlemania she beats uh sasha for have an awesome moment and they're supposed to have the rematch we don't even get that we get becky comes in and takes the title off of you know yeah well i mean you gotta think all right so Let's talk about like how what I was just saying when we asked about how SummerSlam was, and I said it was based off of how the crowd's reaction was. Mm-hmm. When Becky came out, not gonna lie, she might have beat CM Punk's pop. <laughs> when Becky came out, that pop was crazy, yeah. outrageous. Yeah. Now, what are you gonna do to turn somebody? Because we already know the man is not a baby face. The man, when they first started this whole thing, was a bad guy. So what are you going to do to bring a returning person that literally solidified for these last three years in women's wrestling? I mean, I don't care what anyone says. Becky Lynch took a platform and literally took on a Stone Cold type role going into this women's thing after she changed that gimmick but my thing is what way can you do it yes there has been different ways that becky could have interfered in a match becky could have came at the very end or something like that no let's do it that we know the absolute way for someone to despise becky let's do it this way now for you to do that there are so many different ways. When we say, oh, they squash Sasha, I meant squash Bianca. That's not correct. When I say that they squash Bianca, when they squash Bianca, that means that she's completely off the storyline. That means that she's gone. Like, all that hard work, bye. You, you didn't do what we needed. Now, this can go into Survivor Series, uh, the Saudi Arabia show that's coming up soon. I mean, there's numerous things now that you could do with Bianca. Because honestly, who really could dance with Bianca in SmackDown while Sasha was gone? You had Carmella, 
You had Alexa, uh, the Selena Vega. I mean, you really did not have these names that really could push Bianca to a stardom of a champion. I mean, like I said, we might upset some people on this, but to put that that pure, we already said. How many times do we need to see a Bianca versus Sasha? Okay, Becky shows up. Now you're mad because <laughs> now she has somebody to go with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's an artist storytelling. Man. Yeah, you're right. You're right, and that's what it's about. That's is what it's about. And that was the uh, title of the last show: the art of story of the art of storytelling. You know, the art of wrestling. So, um, yeah, you're right. I need that. So, where does Sasha Banks come back? Come back and fit in with all this? Then? I mean, like I said, there's so many different now. There's so many ideas that you could go into this, and now. It's got the Twitter guys and all social media people losing their minds going, oh, we're going to have a three-way dance. Oh, we're going to do this. Oh, well, Becky's now in this picture. What, what are we going to do now? Now, it's the biggest thing about wrestling. The champion does not make the wrestler. The wrestler makes the championship. Yes, it sucked that Bianca lost the way she did. I, I'm going to say it. Yes, but... How long does usually a baby face hold a title? Not long. Not long. Not, Not long. long at all. Not long. You pay, you pay money to watch wrestling to see the bad guy get beat. Honestly, mm-hmm. that's why I believe Charlotte. That's why Charlotte won the title. Mm-hmm. Because honestly, you're not going to pay just to see Nikki Ash win the uh, wrestle yeah, as the champion. You're right about that. You're going to pay to watch the bad guy get beat. You're going to see if they can get beat. So you're going to tune in. You're going to pay their ticket to watch this. That's why Ric Flair was so dang good. Because they paid to see him get beat every single week. Mm-hmm. I you mean, that's the, art of, that's the art of storytelling, man. Yeah, I dig it. I dig it. I really do dig it, man. You mentioned Charlotte. And while we were on the women's wrestling, uh, she won her, what, 12-13 championship in WWE at SummerSlam. Uh, like you said, we may have upset some people, but I love the fact that she won the women's championship. You know, who else could they, you know, put it on? You know, I mean, Rhea Ripley is still, you know, getting, you know. I, my thing about Rhea Ripley, I think she don't remember her gimmick. I don't think she knows what the purpose of her gimmick is. Like when we said, remember where Riddle said back then where him and Cena first met and Cena asked him, what does Matt Riddle stand for? Yeah. And he couldn't really answer it. That's where I'm at with Rhea Ripley right now. I don't see what the meaning of her character is. Like, honestly, goth, I mean, kind of like a page type character, but it just feels like when she's in the ring, it doesn't feel like a persona the way she wrestles. Mm. Yeah. I mean, honestly, and I'll be real with you on some of the matches her and Charlotte had were really good, but I feel like Charlotte had to slow down to work with Rhea. Like, it felt like she had to drop down her talent, basically, to continue with Rhea. Because I just Mm -hmm. felt like they just, they clicked on so many ways. But it was also those times, it's just like, okay, now I need to slow it down and get back into this. Like, I I don't know what Rhea Ripley's gimmick really is. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. That makes sense. She's... You know, she she get a little push. You know, she's doing her thing. I dig her, but is is this something that's not totally connecting? You know, all the way with me with her. But I mean, like like I said, I'm so glad they put the title back on Charlotte. You know, she's the opportunity, opportunist or opportunity, opportunity. <laughs> Let me get it right. The opportunity <laughs> uh, for women to come in uh, to beat her. You know, like you said, you know, pay money to see. You know, the bad. You know, the bad guy, or the bad woman. I mean, how many wrestling? Right? How many wrestling companies do you see a true on baby face holding the title now? Independence. Yeah, it might be different just because there's way more egos and the promoter standpoint, like stuff like that. But WWE, AEW and stuff, I don't really see a baby face holding a title. Mm-hmm. Not too much. Not too much, though. But uh, she's back. Like I said, uh, she's back champion, and that's going to be cool right there. So I'm, I'm digging that, the fact. Um, before we uh, move on with SummerSlam, though, what's your thoughts on Karrion Cross? Because I, <laughs> oh, I that one's been a that's been another one, right? <laughs> yeah, I think he's. I, I don't know, man. I, I like woo. 
Some say he didn't sign up for this. I, but man, what you what you think on it? It just seemed a whole 360. The question is, <laughs> the question is, was it his idea? Like we don't know. We don't mm -hmm. know if this was his idea or their idea. Like we're just flat out going, oh, this is Vince's fault. This is Vince's what doing. This is Vince's work. Vince gets the final approval, but also, and Vince has said it. He actually is open to actually find out what these guys can do. Like, that's why they go to NXT. That's why they go to the Performance Center to learn how to connect with a crowd, learn how to connect with the audience based off of appearance and stuff. Is so, he, is he connecting with you? I don't know. I don't know. With the mask thing, I mean, but you got to think it's the first time. Yeah. Like, the same thing, we, we, we bashed Nikki Ash on this thing, but she's over. I mean, yeah. really, Nikki Ash is over, dressed as a dadgum superhero. Mm -hmm. It's the kids. It, you just connected with one visual of the audience. You've literally connected with 90% of the fan base right now with WWE, the kids. You just connected with them. Now, nonstop toys, nonstop things. Yes, we like to bash the thing about Karrion Cross, but guess what? That man just scored himself an action figure. Like, because he has a different look in ways. Yeah. But Yeah, you got to think of it like that. Yeah. I mean, marketing mm -hmm. standpoint, that, that's the thing about when, when you jump from the independent and going up to there. That's where a lot of people fall off on is the marketing standpoint. Like, mm -hmm. now he could sell masks and stuff like this. This might have been yeah. his idea. You yeah. never know with this. Yeah, you never like, know. Like, we're just going into that jumping like, oh, Vince did this. Vince did that. Like, mm -hmm. yes. Vince might have had something to do with some of it, but honestly, I don't think he dressed him like a person <laughs> like you would see in a, I don't know. <laughs> hey, like you said, I, I don't know. You know, I mean, when he first came out, I, like I said, I was digging him. He still was new to me. I, I'm pretty sure he was hot on the independent scene. You know, everybody really knew him. Mm -hmm. And uh, Scarlet, Scarlet was a, a, a thing, you know, to him. They added to him. I think once they took that away from him or her, you know, away from him, it just seemed like it just, you know, his interest kind of, I think you got to get a new music though. You is know? she still in NXT or like what, what happened I, with I, her? I, I really don't even know. I can't even tell you that. Not one bit. Not one bit. I can't even tell you that one though. But mm. I, hey, what's the best for him though? What's the best for him though? Um, But we're going to move on you guys back on to SummerSlam because like I said, it was an amazing event. Uh, Goldberg was there. Uh, a lot of people had opinions on Goldberg and he took on Bobby Lashley. It was a cool matchup. I, I, I had my opinions on it. I thought he was going to squash him in less than like two no. minutes. You know, I, I just didn't think it was going to go that long. I mean, like, you know, we, we all see Gobert in the middle of the ring, and the longer the match goes, sort of the better it gets in a way. So, I mean, like, but, hey, you know, so, hey, his knee gave out on him, and he, he beat up his son. <laughs> I think a lot of people oh. excited. A lot of people were excited <laughs> that he beat up his son. <laughs> I'm sure Gage loved that moment, though. I'm sure Gage really loved that moment. Like, mm -hmm. come on, man. You get to go in the ring in front of that big of a crowd with your yeah. dad. And I mean, you you witnessed your dad, like, what was he, eight years old or something like that, when you get yeah. to see his dad win the Universal title, come yeah. back, and then you're actually in the ring with your dad. And, I mean, the kid looks really – he looks really good for his age. I think he's like 15 or 16 now. So it's he like, was, yeah, he grew, he grew crazy fast, man. Like the side by side, got them jeans, man. What you <laughs> yeah, think? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> like if you if you look at a side by side by side picture of Dominic, you know, then and now, it was like, man, yeah, it took some time for him to grow up. But man, look at uh, Goldberg's son, man. It was like phew, instant, instant though. Mm -hmm. But what you thought of the match, though? What would you thought of the match? I liked it. I think it was the first time to actually tell how Goldberg can really tell a story. And, and honestly, I feel like it, it helped Bobby Lashley in ways too. Because mm -hmm. honestly, I think Bobby was getting to that point where he was begging for the crowd to boo him. I mean, some things like MVP. MVP is the best addition that Bobby Lashley has right now. But Bobby can be on the mic. Bobby mm -hmm. literally could be on what he wants and still carry Raw right now. Because honestly, best thing going on with Raw, in my opinion, is probably Bobby Lashley. And it's long overdue on some things. And now we might get the dream match that Bobby Lashley has been asking for for so long. Bobby versus Brock. Mm.
Damn. Okay. Man, you mentioned that. How, how, how can we get that now? Obviously, we had the main event at SummerSlam with Roman, the Tribal Chief, and, and Cena, which was awesome. Um, you know, that, that went the way it was supposed to go. Everybody thought, you know, Roman was going to win, and he won. And out comes Brock Lesnar. He looks like a beast, man. <laughs> I like his new hairstyle and everything, man. <laughs> it's pretty cool, but uh, he, he, he looks a beast. It makes him look crazier. Yeah. It makes him look a little bit crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, they stuffing all these stars, man. And, of course, I know, you know, Fox, you know, they want the big stars mm -hmm. on SmackDown. But, you know, I was like, wow, they ain't split, you know, least Becky up on Raw, maybe Brock go to, you know, mm -hmm. play. It's cool, but I'm digging it, though. But... I don't, I, I don't see with how the tribal chief is going right now, Brock Lesnar um, coming in and, and beating Roman Reigns. If anything, I see them being a tag team. Hmm. There's been some rumors on that. I've seen it. Yeah. But I want this as a fancy book of ones. I want, I want to see if you agree with me. What if Brock Lesnar versus Roman? We've seen that thousands of times. We've seen the results on it. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the twist. Paul Heyman as a special guest referee. Okay. Tell me what type of story that would be. That would be a heck of a match. It wouldn't matter what the moves are or whatever, because oh, you know how Paul Heyman is with Brock. Yeah. yeah. Would Paul trade sides with Roman to go back to Brock? Or he could do like what he did back then where... He turned on Kurt Angle and went with Big Show mm -hmm. that one time. Yeah. And that was, I think that was one of their main breaking moments was when Paul Heyman turned on Kurt Angle. Now, mm -hmm. if you did something like that, that would be pretty interesting. That would be new, it'd be fresh, and in ways it makes a longer storyline for Brock and Roman, if they're gonna try to do that with that. But mm -hmm. my thing about the Brock Lesnar coming back, I think he just proved the AEW ain't going. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you heard the rumors about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody was like, oh, yeah, man, he may be going to uh, AEW. But nah, nah. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, that, uh -huh. that, that, that sounds really interesting, though. I, I I will dig that. You know, Paul Heyman being the special guest referee, though. And, you know, do I see him siding with maybe going back with Brock? I actually see him staying with Roman Reigns. So. You know, Brock is he been with Brock since the beginning of his career. You know, um, like if you think if you think of Brock Lesnar, you think of Paul Heyman. You think of Paul Heyman, you think of mm -hmm. Brock Lesnar. So they like side by side. And I think, you know, especially over the last couple of years and even during the time that Brock Lesnar had been off since I think what last year's WrestleMania or so, mm -hmm. uh, he just, you know, the steam, you know, has got hotter and hotter and people can't wait for him to come back. So he's back. And, you know, with everything's going on and, you know, a lot of mix with Roman is doing, it's new and it's fresh and you got everything. So I see and him Brock. as a baby face. That's going to yeah. be the crazier part. Yeah, I can, I can see Brock hanging on his own. I can see him doing his, doing his thing on his own. He ain't got to say much. And, you know, he's not always there. He could be there every other, you know, now and there. De definitely. So I can really see that, though. I can definitely really see that, though. Obviously, Roman Reigns wins because I, all I can think of is the whole entire bloodline getting involved in that, though. I don't see anybody coming out helping uh, Brock Lesnar. I won't be. Maybe The Rock. Never knew. I was upset about that part of SummerSlam because I did hear rumors about that, mm -hmm. and that was one thing I was excited about. I was like, man, uh -huh. if The Rock comes back, <laughs> I don't care if he even goes to a storyline. <laughs> just show up. Like... With Punk coming back on AEW, I'm pretty sure Vince was just looking at his phone like nonstop, like, all right, we're getting Becky Lynch. <laughs> we're going for Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Stone Cold, obviously, probably no go. All right, let, let's keep scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had to get somebody. I ain't had no rumors about that one, man. Of course, if I did, I would have been on, on the edge of my seat. And at least I thought um, they were going to do something like with uh, when they brought out the Olympians. Mm -hmm. Uh when they brought up the Olympians, and they went up when uh, Shinsuke Nakamura came out, I, and mm -hmm. that didn't go nowhere. And I was like, okay, cool. So I was like, okay, maybe somebody come out, you know. And also, Miz and Morrison, they said they was gonna do something big, uh, or whatever, but yeah, I'm heartbroken. I'm heartbroken oh, about that. You're heartbroken one. about that one. Uh, like <laughs> literally, like I say, Bobby Lash has been carrying Raw, but man, Miz and Morrison, how more creative can you be without those two? Like, literally, those two 
my daughter listens to their daggum hey hey ho ho song almost every day of the day almost she will mark out for them like she's listening to a justin bieber song like literally my daughter will jam out to that song completely so i mean i wish john morrison was gonna turn on miz change it up a little bit because miz has already turned on john morrison so Mm -hmm. now it's kind of like that's probably all right squashed and done but Maybe that's going to give them a shine into it, but I, I just love the little goofy stuff that they were doing because it, it was showing an entertainment aspect. Yeah. That's what WWE is, entertainment. Mm-hmm. They've already flat out said they're not a pro wrestling show. Yeah, they not. They not, though. Yeah, it was, it was a little – I seen it coming, though. I, I mean, I was agreeing. I was agreeing with uh, Morrison the whole night, you know. It was like, don't miss. Come out here and steal the spotlight each and every time. Yes. You know, I was like, yeah, you sure do. But uh, it was fun. I was, laughing. I, it. <laughs> I was laughing when uh, he said Jake Paul is going to kick his ass. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> He's a natural superstar. If he ever comes back, he got natural heat right there. Like, they just really booed him, though. Booed everything about him. But, uh, man, SummerSlam was off the chain. Really sad about John Morrison and uh, The Miz. But uh, we're going to move on, you guys. Uh, like I said, we had John Cena versus Roman Reigns. Which was an incredible matchup. Uh, the last time I had you on the podcast, we were, you know, mm-hmm. some weeks away from fans returning. Uh, but when they did return, uh, what you thought of them and how your reception of the fans uh, been, you know, like to been back and what you thought of John Cena returning? I mean, long overdue. It's great to see fans back. I mean, that's what the purpose of wrestling really is mm. with the fans. And for Cena to come back, I mean, you knew he wasn't going to come back on that, on the no fans era. Yeah, like, he even yeah. said it flat out. He It just felt not right. It did not feel like wrestling to him. So, yeah. with him coming back, and I mean, we could throw shade at Cena all we want, but when Cena came back, bro, he went that whole week, those whole times. I mean, we might have only saw the televised promos, whatever, but Cena was wrestling these dark matches left and right. So, yeah. it wasn't like he was just showing up and be like, hey, yeah. I got what I needed, and I'm done. No, he was working his craft. And, I mean, honestly, Cena looked really good in the ring. But yeah, my thing about their match was I don't like the fact Roman looked like he squashed Cena. That part I did not like. You got thrown off the top rope as on at AA on the top rope. You should have still been selling that. You should not have been looking like you just completely de- devoured John Cena like that because – I was pulling for the 17, and then obviously you saw the promo where Roman said, I'll quit WWE if that happens. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, oh, all right, we know who's winning this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know who's winning that one, man. I mean, he's back. He looked great. I, I really I want to see gonna... 17. I yeah, want to see it. Yeah, I think it's eventually going to happen, though. If he do win 17, I want it to be the WWE Championship. You know, Universal Championship would be cool. I don't think he won that title, have you? No, I don't think he has. So, I mean, I think that'd be cool, though. It'd be real cool. But which I don't like that how John Cena rolled out without giving Finn Balor his match, though. Like, I think John Cena, Finn Balor was in the middle of the ring. What you about to say? Oh, hold on, hold on. Remember that? Remember, remember when we were talking about the Bianca Belair thing? Where oh, it's going yeah. so many ways? Yeah, yeah so many ways. Now that's going to push Finn. Mm-hmm. Now, that can go to a storyline to where... He could just go AWOL and be one of the baddest bad guys on the on the card, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I do not like the babyface spin. I no. do not like it. For him to be so-called, I know with the demon character and all that, the babyface spin, the smiley and all that, we need to throw all that out. He needs to go and stay like how he was doing on NXT because he did really freaking well. He carried NXT for through those wars or whatever we want to call that. Mm-hmm. But – if Finn, I mean, I think that is now a visual to figure out what's Finn going to do. What's Finn going to do? Mm-hmm. Cena lost. What's Finn going to do? Now, Finn could probably put himself into that match between Brock and Roman. You mm-hmm. never know. There's so mm-hmm. many different stories now. 
Yeah. Never know. So you are certainly right though. Because I would like to see that. I think Finn Balor in a way, like you said, I, I love the storytelling, but you know, I feel as though they just pushed my man Finn Balor to the side. He beat Baron Corbin. Oh it's John of Cena and Roman Reigns. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> SummerSlam, <laughs> box office. Mm. Cena, can he get 17 times? I mean, the best setting ever, Las Vegas. So you're betting all odds. Yeah. Can Cena hit 17? That, that, like, honestly. Yeah. It was a betting moment in Las Vegas, though. It was, though. I mentioned Baron Corbin. How, how, you, how, how you digging what's going <laughs> on with him? <laughs> thinking, I actually love the creativity of Baron's doing that. I, I've praised Baron every single time. Baron is a true heel in wrestling. But now where this story is going on where literally nobody's helping him and stuff like that, Maybe this is going into a babyface turn. I don't know, mm-hmm. but he's staying true to that character. I love it. That yeah. I mean, honestly, people used to bash Baron from just playing football and then coming into wrestling, not really knowing what a wrestler and all that stuff was. So for him to do this, that takes a lot of character because now I'm sure a lot of people fan wise are looking at him like, "Hey, man, I'll give you a quarter." <laughs> <Honestly>. <laughs> yeah, they be having dollars out, you know, when you come out ringside and stuff. Like, hey man, here you go. But uh, I, I think it's one of the best things they're doing right now. You know, he, 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 the right? one thing I wish they would show on video is where he was trying to open the chef board of the ravioli can on the street. I wish they would show that part. <laughs> 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 it was one I think where uh, he got fined when he was coming into the arena. They said, uh, "Yeah, man, you we gotta find you for dress code." And you know, it was just so much. I was like, "Yo, this is some of the best stuff he's doing right now." Mm-hmm. Man. Like, and then I love the part where the security guard was looking at him like, "You're not this guy on the yeah. trailer." <laughs> <laughs> said i work here i work here like you can't work here what's up with your shirt bro <laughs> you don't look looking like at your the... shoes boy you ain't here you don't work here you don't look like none of the other wrestlers none of them <laughs> oh man yeah everything he's doing man is gold i love what he's doing i thought he, what i thought he was gonna do is uh come down uh between one of the championship matches or whatever and try to attempt the cash in biggie's briefcase <laughs> See, I, I was hoping they would have done something like that. Then obviously, be, that's how Big E would get his briefcase back. But in ways, too, it, it helped Big E out a little bit, too. Because honestly, I thought Big E was going to catch that SummerSlam. Before Roman said his promo that he was going to quit if he lost, I saw that Cena's going to win 17. Big E's going to catch it on Cena. That's how I saw it. Because we saw the blow a kiss part. And I'm like, bro, he is literally saying he is about to be gone gone so it's like what better way him hit 17 and then boom Big E comes in I mean that building would lose it with Big E because honestly I, I'm ready to see what Big E's gonna do obviously we're gonna see him turn heel I don't see Big E cashing the money in the bank as a baby face mm. not because creativity wise right now Big E's been a baby face for so long what better way to turn like how Orton did? I mean, Orton, I mean, Orton's never really been considered a baby face, but that turn that he did on the briefcase against Daniel Bryan, still probably one of yeah. the most disrespectful things in wrestling <laughs> that they still call to this day. <laughs> Big E could have that moment, mm. and I feel like that will be in the near future. Hmm. That's so interesting. I, I really do. I really do. That can, like you said, it can go so many ways with that one right there, though. So many ways. Ah, man. It makes you want. It makes you want to just tune in every week. Yeah, it do. It really do. And that would have been really interesting to see if he would have cashed in that burn. Burn is gold right now on the screen. It's really, gold. <laughs> really gold is what he's doing though. Um, the next night, you guys, we're gonna move on. Uh, if I can think of anything else that happened really at the SummerSlam that uh, was really big. Um, other than that, uh, the next night we had Takeover. Did you check out Takeover? Oh yeah. Ah, yeah. man. I got to say this. My favorite guy still to this day is Cameron. I love everything this dude is doing. Too and well. I hope, I I mean, I was sitting there trying to figure out what the heck he keeps saying to the moon for, <laughs> but that finisher that he does, I'm like, I got it. I yeah. figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I love Cameron Grimes, man. He's going to the moon, man, if he ain't already there, though. I love it, though. 
Uh, man, the matchup between him and L.A. Knight, which I really dig. I feel like L.A. Knight, of course, once he lost the title to Cameron Graham, he's going to, to live. You know, some brighter things up there with the NXT mm -hmm. Championship, I can see a whole lot of big things for L.A. Knight. But far as Cameron Grimes, though, man, he he's money. He is money. I, li I like what they're doing with him and Ted DiBiase, though. But which seems like that came to an end on uh, Tuesday this week when he gave mm -hmm. him the replica belt and he gave him back the, you know, million dollars. So does that mean he still is, uh, Cameron Graham still is the million dollar champion? I don't know. I, I mean, <laughs> you don't know. We'll never know. I mean, that's yeah. kind of like how how Taz brought back the FTW championship. Is oh, Brian man. Cage really FTW champion? Like, honestly, like, we, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I think I it was just to bring the name back. I mean, you can't bring Ted DiBiase back and not bring that title back because, I mean, some of the names that have held that title, that's still a very prestigious belt, yeah. literally. Stone yeah. Cold, probably one of the most memorable ones on it, but I don't know. We'll never see. Well, I mean, I'm just glad Cameron Grimes finally won a title. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm glad he, he won the title. He was a he was a good butler, though. He, he wasn't a bad butler. <laughs> I, love, I love the whole build up to that because I remember. I mean, L.A. Knight. We always know it. We also know as Eli Drake. And I was mm -hmm. so curious, like what they were going to do because honestly. That man carried Impact for a moment mm -hmm. because I didn't really give a dang about anything on Impact storyline and until he came in there, mm -hmm. and I mean he carried that brand for so long, so yeah. long, and now just seeing what he's doing here, he's kind of doing the same stuff, but as a different aspect. I kind of see him as being like another Bobby Roode. Yeah, man, I'm 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 digging with LA Night Dog. I'm really, I'm really am. Really digging what he's doing, though. Cameron Grimes, though, man. He's going to the moon, though. Really going to the moon, man. I'm um, just curious to see what the rest is going to hold for that. Because <laughs> yeah. I just love the creativity so far. So, obviously, it's going to be getting more and more better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It was funny when, uh, when, when, when he was his butler for a minute. He was like, yeah, man, you got to wash my balls, man. I was like, really? <laughs> he got to wash his balls, and it was crazy that WWE, you know, left that in. But then they, they, they took out the part where Roman Reigns, uh, mm -hmm. old, uh, John Cena, he's like missionary. I was like, come on, man. Like, you, that don't make I sense. I think that was USA's doing. I think that was USA's right. issue on that. That sounds just about right. I believe you on that. That sounds just about right. Uh, NXT TakeOver, man, was off the chain. Besides Cameron Grimes and LA Knight, um, Cameron, uh, Karrion Cross, of course, uh, took on Samoan Joe, which he's back. And Samoan Joe is the three-time NXT champion. Uh, how you dig on that? What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Well, exactly what do you thought it was going to be? Hard-hitting. And, mm -hmm. I mean, those two beat the living tar out of each other. I mean, other than the match that we'll probably talk about later on. But I'm just glad to see Joe back in the ring. I mean, yeah. it's been long overdue. Joe, I literally, every single time when he was on Raw, I was sitting there, I was like waiting for that moment to see what they're going to do with Joe. Waiting for what they're going to do with Joe. Because Joe, Joe does what he wants. Joe literally will listen to any storyline you have, but it doesn't look like it's going to destroy his character. Mm -hmm. Just every way he's done. He's done some stupid things too now, storyline wise, but Joe still makes it to where it doesn't destroy him, where it doesn't kill him off or something like that. So here's the thing that I'm trying to figure out is now, did they put this title on Joe for him to carry NXT to get them back to that prestigeness that they need to be? Or mm -hmm. is this coming up for a near future where they're going to build up to a big story? Man, hey, it's like you mentioned, that can go both ways, though. In my opinion, I think they could, you know, definitely use Joe to big up, you know, NXT prestige again because mm -hmm. I think ever since it came to TV, it kind of like fell flat a little bit, you know? It, it, I think it was just the way the characters were literally, they knew they were good, but mm -hmm. acting wise and stuff like that, I think that was what really hurt them. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's what it was. That really wasn't. Um, another match that was awesome at NXT TakeOver, you guys. The match of the night, in my opinion, you guys. Mm -hmm. Ilya Dragunov took it on Walter for the NXT Championship. Man, that was a hard-hitting matchup. And when they showed the, uh, the what was it, the 
the beginning of the match and all that, you know, leading up to the story. And I was like, man, that was like, it was, they said 10 months ago. That was like October. I was like, man, I don't even feel like mm -hmm. that was that long ago. I feel like that was mm -hmm. earlier this year. But man, they went to war and yo, I would not want to be neither one of their chesses. Like they just, <laughs> woo, man, I would not want to be that, man. Oh, man. That was that was crazy though, and I did not see Dragon off winning that though. I like I like the way he won it though. I really like the way he won it. He put him in you know the sleeper and you know pulled on it a little bit more, and he topped out. That was shocking. I did not Why did you see not that. see him? If I, I he's mean, already lost twice to. And you, say right. he, you say he lost twice. I don't I don't remember the first one or maybe the second one. It's one of the I think it was the I think they I think he only lost one. Because okay. I think it was that one they hard hit and stuff like that. So were you saying you you didn't you wouldn't want to be their chest? So here's one thing that we always did in wrestling, and this is one thing that made it look so more real every time. So if I knew I was gonna get chopped, I literally would make sure I'm not tan or anything for it because that's where you want that red mark to look like. Oh my gosh! Like you want that thing to look that much. Now dragging off. That guy looked like he was already beaten up before he even got in the ring. <laughs> mm -hmm. Obviously with the patch on his eye and stuff, but man, I was sitting there trying to figure out, I was like, why do they praise this guy so much? Standing next to Walter, it looked like Andre the Giant fighting Rey Mysterio. So I was just sitting there like, how's this guy really can go head up with Walter? And man, the way they were hitting each other, I was just like, okay. I see why now. I see why. I mean, the match, the match itself was. There were some things like they needed to kind of slow down on, because obviously they had the crowd to a certain aspect, and then there were some things that they just thought, okay, we just need to go over more. Mm -hmm. But the match itself, I mean, honestly, match of the night, for flat out match of the night. Yeah. Uh, it gave me those old chopping days. Where I was like, good lord. <laughs> Yeah, by far the match of the night. I loved every bit of it. Like you said, I, I like Walter is such, you know, a big. It wasn't guy. the main event either. That, I, mean, yeah. I honestly thought that. Could be. Yeah, it could have. You know, Walter is such a, like a big guy, and you know he chops real hard, and he was like the UK champion for almost close to what nine hundred days or so. So mm -hmm. you know, he just had so much momentum. I just didn't see it coming though. But Ilya Dragunov is a guy who just never quits, never backs down. So. That was that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool though. Um, another thing that was pretty cool at Takeo, we seen Adam Cole, baby, Adam Cole, baby, take on uh Kyle Riley. Um, I don't, I don't really like seeing them wrestle, man. Like, Undisputed Era was was great. Like, I understand you know all good things come to an end. <laughs> you know, like I, I really don't. You know, I really don't have no dog in the fight. It's all cool. It's great. And, you know, obviously rumors were surrounding around. I didn't know it until afterwards that uh, Adam Cole may be leaving or is going to be leaving um, NXT. You know, they, offer me, they are offering a million dollars per year to stay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was a cool matchup. You know, what was your thoughts on it? I'm back and forth on it. Like, honestly, I knew who Adam Cole was. Kyle O'Reilly, I just never been sold on. Like, honestly, I've never really been sold on Kyle O'Reilly. Now, I think they did this to help him in ways because, honestly, I didn't see anybody really pushing him to what Adam Cole could be. Obviously, Triple H and probably Shawn Michaels saw this as, oh, man, we can make this as like HBK versus Triple H type match. So, I mean, the way the aspect was for a while, I mean, it kind of looked like that. But I'm still not sold on Kyle Riley. And... Mm -hmm. I mean, the three stages of heck match, it's about time they brought that match back. I mean, those, I feel like, should be back in ways. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it wasn't bad. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll say it wasn't bad, but honestly, it's like how you just said. You do what you want to see those wrestle each other. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it was a match. I mean, yeah. honestly, it was a match for me. And obviously, we saw it. Our, we already looked ahead of it. It was like, all right, Adam Cole loses. He's leaving. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Kyle Riley loses. Adam Cole's staying. Mm -hmm. Now, I think now we're at that story like, oh, my gosh, what's Adam Cole doing? Is he going to not take the million dollars? Like, well, what's going to happen? Because, <laughs> honestly, Vince loves the idea of Adam Cole. Mm -hmm. Literally. And, honestly, they've already said it. They will book him 
like a Shawn Michaels. Yeah, I heard he goes through all the interviews. That's interesting. That's so, real good. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I think Triple H is not going to let that one slide. Yeah. I hope he don't because Adam Cole is really good. I'm not really sold on Kyle O'Reilly neither just yet. So, you know. I, I like Bobby Fish better than Kyle O'Reilly, honestly. Hey. Hey, I'm, I'm interested to see where they go. So. Another cool matchup we've seen Raquel Gonzalez retain her NXT Women's Championship over Dakota Kai. Really loving what they're doing with the uh, with the women's division and NXT in general. Um, one thing I did forget about SummerSlam that everybody was going crazy about was uh, Edge returning or Edge coming out to the brood music, man. I think that was old school right there. Everybody loved that. And he took on Seth Rollins, and it was an awesome matchup. I love that story. Uh, what, you, what was your thoughts on that one? Well, I'm sorry for Gang Grill because obviously Gang Grill was supposed to be on AEW <laughs> yeah. Dynamite. Yeah. So that kind of messed his option up with that. But also, yeah. Edge fed, fed into this character. Like, Edge really wanted this done. And I think it was the best timing. Like, honestly, what way can you promote Edge? to go against Seth Rollins. This is a match of the ages. Like, honestly, if we really think about it, this is Edge at 2021 era right now. Everybody wants to say Shawn, I mean, Shawn Michaels and Seth Rollins. No. Seth is literally Edge completely. I mean, ultimate opportunities. Mm -hmm. You got the best cash-in at WrestleMania. Still to this day, probably one of the best cash-ins of all time. Mm -hmm. You cashed it in on Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. So... The brood entrance wave, man. Oh my gosh, it was so good to see it. It was so mm -hmm. good to see it. Like, I wish Gangrel could have been in it. That was the only thing I would say. I wish Gangrel would have had some involvement in that match just mm -hmm. to really bring that brood feeling back. But just the way Edge told it, coming from like, man, I have to go from somewhere far down deep that I thought I locked up and done with for him to come out to the brood. And do the bloodbath and with Seth in an all-white suit, completely told that story so well. Even though he looked completely like cement was <laughs> falling on him, but it was it was good all around. Yeah, it was good. It was good. I actually thought it was going to be Gang Grill who was going to show up last Friday on SmackDown, oh, you know, my. coming out. You know, I thought that was going to be the case. Uh, but I... No, after we found out he was supposed yeah. to be an AEW Dynamite. Yeah. No, I, no. <laughs> I, I know that hurt his plans, though. I know that really did, man. I, I know they really did. But that was really cool, man, him pulling that out. When Seth came out there, it, it was a little bit, you know, for a while. And I was like, okay, you know, I feel like they're doing mm -hmm. something special with, the, with, you know, with Edge coming out. And Man, it was an awesome match. I love this story. I can't wait to see more where that goes. Um, before we head on out of here, it was one thing that happened last week. I thought it was amazing. Uh, what do you think about the Chris Jericho and the fans who sang a cappella to uh, one of maybe Chris Jericho's final matches? Over. Over? Completely over. <laughs> uh, you can get somebody to sing. And that song, that song is not that easy to sing. I, I, like, I know, honestly, right? that song is not that easy to sing. And I for them it. to go in the rhythm and everything, I mean, the crowd was spot on. It, down, it damn near sounded like they were singing the actual version of it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for them to do that, I think Jericho, it brought a horizon to Jericho's like, this is why I do what I do. This is why I'm still at this age and I still can go to the top of my level. It's based off of this. This moment right here, I could retire happily done sealed it doesn't matter the story that he's telling with mgaf perfect like he's literally saying like this is bothering me he's beat me twice i need to beat him mm -hmm. now you got this moment now it's where oh my gosh like what's gonna happen can jericho beat mjf or, or is this the end of y2j obviously not y2j jericho the yeah. pain master or whatever he's doing now yeah but that acapella version, you don't see it often. Yeah, you don't. You don't. You don't see it often, man. I called him the goat. I said it last week, man. I don't even know all the lyrics to that song. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm mumming half of it. I'm all I heard was Judas. Yeah. Judas in my mind. Yeah. And let it go, let it go. That's all I know. For them to sing that whole spot and literally be spot on, I was just yeah. like, I was okay. Like, for real. I think that's why the YouTube viewers are up so much for the song right now. And the acapella version. They were just going at it after that, though. Oh, man. That was pretty nice, man. Pretty, but Dre, pretty nice. I want to ask you something real quick. Yeah, 
with AEW now having CM Punk. Now, for them to bring CM Punk in the opening of the show, did you kind of already lose the visual of the all the wrestlers in the back and now visual and Punk? Or do you think it actually leads them now to a, a better outlook to get that product more over? Okay, uh, what you mean? Like when he came out first, did I just forget about everybody else? No, did, did it kind of like just like destroy the credibility of finding out every, the rest of the show? Because now you literally got what you wanted the very opening of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. In my opinion, saying. my opinion, you always want something like that the very end, the very yeah. end of the show. Yeah. Because you mean. have you have talent to literally open that show. And get the crowd all the way through the show to where it gets that moment. And then, boom, CM Punk comes back out of the blue. Yeah. And, I mean, honestly, he could have challenged Darby Allen during their match. Very easy pop because, honestly, Punk didn't really put on a promo. Punk was really just basically bashing WWE. Just you know that you knew what he was going to be. Like, we knew this. Yeah. So, honestly, I think that would have been more effective them to do it at the end of the show and him interrupt Darby Allen or something like that. Yeah, I mean, most definitely, most definitely. I occur, I, I really agree with that because I was saying to myself, okay, they're going to keep that to the end. Most likely, you know, CM Punk is you know, coming in. All the other matches can carry the show as far as the beginning or end. Mm -hmm. like you said. Um, puts the visual on the characters, puts yeah. the visual on the workers before yeah. – you do this. Now, they've been complaining about part-timers and all this stuff. You yeah. WWE does it at the very end of the show. So you've already seen the whole show. So when they bring that guy out, okay, it doesn't like erase everybody that just was on the show. Mm -hmm. When you do that at the very beginning, that, that, that excitement, the crowd cheering, they, they're near losing their voice already. Yeah, now you got to right. keep continuing on the show that way. Yeah, you right. That's where right. that is going to mm -hmm. lower down. Yeah. But in my opinion, though, the only reason why I think, you know, they brought out Punk to begin with is the simple fact. Um, to prove it. They, to prove uh, that he was there. But, well, not, not only that, they brought out Punk at the beginning. For one, they were coming off. SmackDown ended at 10. Dynam uh, uh, Rampage is starting at 10. You know, and this is supposed to be the most anticipated, you know, show. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want nobody to wait for it. Not only that, the show actually started two hours earlier you know, with that's why I was wondering. I didn't think it started at ten. I thought it yeah, started yeah, at like eight. Yeah, yeah, it started at eight. They they filmed uh Dynam uh they filmed Dark and Grand um uh, Dark and Elevation. <laughs> they filmed those okay. two shows, so they already had them sitting there waiting for two hours. You know, mm -hmm. by the time Punk came out, I seen a little bit empty seats. Like that's all they wanted to see. That was right back mm -hmm. then. You feel me? That's so, what I mean, I'm saying. Like you waited that long. If you would have mm -hmm. put that at the very end of the show, yeah. nobody would have left that damn show. Yeah. Nobody yeah. would have. Like, honestly, you seeing that, it's like how what women's wrestling used to be. We literally would. That's like your concession time. Oh, man, you want to go buy a shirt? You want to go do this? Let's yeah. wait on a women's match and stuff like that. Now it's different. But mm -hmm. with Punk coming out that very early, that that time, I just felt like yeah. you, you kind of messed up what you had. Like, honestly, you could have brought Jungle Boy and them boys out there. I like what they are. I like that character. I like that whole persona with Jungle Boy and uh, what's that guy's name? Saurus? Or I can't remember. Was Saurus guy Lucha, or whatever? Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus, yeah. I mean, yeah. I love what they're doing right now. But yeah. I just that felt could... like it was way too early. Way too yeah. early. And I mean, of course, it's in Chicago. Chicago. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. if this would have been like Milwaukee or something like that, I think it would have even been more effective. Yeah. Because you know that Chicago was going to be over with Punk. You knew yeah. this. You could have yeah. waited at the end of the show to bring CM Punk, especially in Chicago. Mm -hmm. That would have, you would have had yeah. the whole town shut down and start cheering for Punk. <laughs> You're right about that. Yeah, I, I, I saw it both ways. And, and, you know, I mean, with him coming out at 10, that was, you know, a stroke. That was just basically for the ratings right there. They wanted mm -hmm. to top some good ratings. If they would have waited, you know, like, uh, who did they start? They wanted to do that to WWE. Yeah, that's, that's what, what they, they wanted. wanted. That's what they, they wanted. They wanted that to big do. time. Yeah, they had private party taking on, I think, what, uh, Luchasaurus, Jurassic Express. 
and they had Gabe Cargill, you know, in a short match that lasted no more than like two minutes. And then you had John Moxley take on uh, Danny Garcia that didn't even last long. So, I, I mean, with the punk promo, I thought the show was at least going to go over an hour or so, but it actually didn't. It was just an hour. But, hey, that would have made sense for him to end the show, you know, and, you know, challenge Darby Island and he would have been right there and all that. So, hey, it worked out the way it did, I guess, you know. Hey, it was fired up, they were ready. That's and, why I question some of the judgments on AEW when it comes to stuff like this because these little mistakes are. Yeah, they're they're doing great. I'm never gonna sit here and say AEW is not gonna make it, whatever. Mm-hmm. But these little mistakes have really been affecting some of their stuff. Like monumental moments. If Punk came at the very end of that show, you would have had those people stay at that building even longer. Yeah. Just to <laughs> sit there and be like, bro, like Punk is here? Let's mm-hmm. do this. But when you do it at the opening of the show, they're like, All right, we've seen this. All right, we're good. Like mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And I, like I said, you know, they he came out, you know, when he came out at the, at the, at the top of the show, I thought so. it, it could have went so many ways, though, so many ways that they could have, you know, actually did that. That would have been great. I mean, you know, having, I'm just glad he's back in wrestling. Honestly, I'm just glad to see him back in wrestling. You're right. Right. You're right about that. I'm glad he's back. He's going to be challenging um, Darby Allen at All Out. So that's going to be cool. That's going to be really, really cool. Cool, man. Yo, Warren, it's been an awesome time, man, chopping it up with you, man. Hey, man. Yeah, on Talk Pro Wrestling. Whatever, man. Is there something else we didn't cover? Is there something else we didn't talk about? Anything else you, you know, could think uh, of? I don't know. I mean, do you got anything else? Wrestling wise no. or anything? No, that's that's about it. That's about it. That's about it, man. All right, I man. Talked about All right. everything. Talked about everything this week. Cause you know, we gotta. Heck of a week coming up as far as SmackDown tonight <laughs> to see what goes with uh, Becky mm-hmm. Lynch and uh, Bianca and, of course, uh, Brock Lesnar. He's back. So yeah. that's going to be really, really uh, That's what I'm saying. Like, man, wrestling is back. Yes, that's what is. I'm saying, man. Wrestling is back. It doesn't matter what brand you cheer for or whatever. Pro wrestling has got to stay a stand now. Like, honestly, crowd yeah. is back. Wrestling is here. Now, mm-hmm. I'll finish up on this. Everybody, if y'all can, check out my podcast, Buzzing with Marlo. We just now published a new episode. I talked to a guy from Germany, uh, Jake Doherty, and, I mean, it's a great chat. We talk about European history and stuff like that. Obviously, it's not wrestling, but we do go with wrestling and stuff like that. But, I mean, check it out. Buzzing with Marlo, it's going to be a fun episode. We publish one every Friday. Um, It's just a good time. Good time. And, uh, Dre, this has always been a pleasure, man. I love doing this. I was so excited when I was sitting there. I was like, man, because I remember when you and uh, Blackheart and all them were doing these talks. I'm like, bro, when I get off of work, I need to we need to get one because I've just I've seen so much negativity when it comes to some of these podcasts talking about wrestling. I'm like, bro, that is the art of wrestling to have you talk about it, regardless if it's good or bad. It's wrestling. That is what's making you tune in what you're buying the merch or anything. These controversial things are was what impacts wrestling. Hey, I like that. I like that, man. Warren, I appreciate you joining me this week on the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling. We had a lot to talk about and digest this week, man. I can't wait for you to join me next time here on oh, Talk absolutely. Pro Wrestling, man. We're going we gonna to chop it up, man. This, you know, you're always welcome. You guys, go check out Buzzing with Marlo, you guys, wherever you get your podcasts. Right now, you guys, for real. And you're going to get a suplex and a choke slam, for real. <laughs> Code breaker Yo. from me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Warren, man, I appreciate you joining me this week on the podcast. All right, man. Thank you, and I hope y'all have a good day, man. Yo, Warren Marlow, man, I appreciate you joining me this week here on the 1130 Podcast. Man, it was an awesome time chopping it up with you, man. Here on uh, Talk Pro Wrestling this week, man, on this Friday, beautiful Friday, you guys. Uh, Wherever you may be at in the world, I hope your day is going lovely for real, man. Uh, Man, it's been an awesome show chopping it up, man, and getting our thoughts and reactions on this past week on SummerSlam. It was an awesome show, man, for real. It's 50, what, 51,000 fans packed Allegiant Stadium, man. It was it was great. SummerSlam, NXT TakeOver. I can't wait till they get back on the road right now when I know which, uh, uh, with the COVID and stuff, like, you know, it's still what it is right now. But, uh, 
Uh, man, they got to get out that Capital Wrestling Center, but it, it is great. I'm loving it, man. Walter and Dragunov stole the show. Really stole the show. And as far as SummerSlam goes, Edge and Seth Rollins was by far, man, the best match on the show. I loved every bit of it. My man Edge was coming in for a spear. Seth Rollins pedigreed him like, <laughs> man, it was one hell of a matchup, man. SummerSlam was awesome, you guys. Uh, Rampage, of course, last week, you guys was off the chain. Off the chain, we seen CM Punk. He is back, back at AEW. He's going to be at All Out September 5th, taking on Darby Allen. So, hey, we're going to see where that goes. We're going to see where that goes. Man, I did not watch that one time. I had to watch it a couple times, man. That reaction, that pop is where every wrestler, independent wrestler, whatever, you're a legend or whatever, you, <laughs> you dream of having that reaction, man. What a reaction that was in Chicago for CM Punk. So, uh, man, we got SmackDown tonight. It's going down. It is going down. Roman Reigns is still the Universal Champion. Brock Lesnar is back. Will he confront Roman Reigns? Will they see him tag team up? What well, we don't know. Paul Heyman is in the middle of it. So, man, hey, I'm loving it. I'm, I can't wait to see where it goes. And also, the man, Becky Lynch, is back. So, there's a lot to look forward to on SmackDown tonight, you guys. Uh, Impact Wrestling was awesome last night. Man, they keep killing it, man, for real. I got to do a dedication show to Impact Pro Wrestling, for real, man. Uh, it's been an awesome show. Awesome show. NXT is doing its thing, man. Cameron Grimes, man, going to the moon, for real. We're going to the moon, you guys, here on the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling. I appreciate everybody who watch and listen to the podcast each week. Over 4.1 thousand downloads, you guys. Keep trucking at it. I thank you so much for downloading and joining, you know, me and my guests each week on the podcast. I know I said this week, uh, I know I said last week on the podcast that we're going to get, we're going to get this uh, tournament going. Um, I'm trying to start a tournament to see who's going to be a winner and the winner will receive a signed copy of my guy Brian Young, who was on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. He has an awesome book out called The Wrestlers, uh, The Wrestlers, Wrestlers, Favorite, Favorite Craft, uh, excuse me, let me get it right. Uh, the Wrestlers, Wrestlers, Favorite Craft of Professional Wrestling. Yes, The Wrestlers, Wrestlers, Craft of Professional Wrestling. Go get a signed copy of that book so you can figure out who's your favorite wrestlers wrestler. So, yeah, man, we're going to get that on, man, and also get Warren Mar Marlowe back on for the podcast, man, to uh, top it up with him. But you guys, man, yo, go check out my man Warren Marlowe podcast, Buzzing with Marlowe, wherever you get your podcasts, man. He's back at it, for real. Yo, it's been an awesome show, man. I'm about to get on out of here, you guys. I hope everybody enjoys SmackDown tonight and enjoy your weekend. I would definitely see you guys back here next week on the podcast for Talk Pro Wrestling, and I will see you guys this Wednesday for the 1130 podcast streaming on EB Radio and YouTube. But before I go, you guys, don't forget to follow the 1130 podcast on all social media platforms. Follow the 1130 podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the 1130 podcast. Yes, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at the 1130 podcast. If you would like to be a guest here on the podcast, email me. That's the 1130podcast at gmail. Dot com. Yes, or just DM me on social media so we can work. You know how we, you know how we get down. For real, it's been an awesome show, you guys. It's been an awesome, awesome show. About to head on out of here. Yo, everybody stay blessed. Stay safe. Give all the glory to God, you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't let up. For real. Yo, it's your man Dre, a.k.a. Dre on wheels. And I'm out.